Welcome to Healthcare IT Today. I'm John Lynn, together with my colleague and friend, Colin Hahn. The world of technology and healthcare are ever-changing in new and novel ways, and that's why we love this stuff. So join us as we discuss the latest healthcare and health IT news meshed together in new ways which help generate ideas and new perspectives. Plus, we'll have a little fun along the way. On today's episode, we'll be discussing EHR optimization. And be sure to follow the show on Twitter at the hashtag HITSM and our personal accounts at TechGuy and at Colin underscore Hung. Plus, check out our 16 years of health IT blog content at healthcareitoday.com. EHR, have you ever implemented an EMR? EHR? <laughs> I worked at an EHR. Company. Oh, that's true. Uh, does that count as implementing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if yeah, I've actually implemented one, that's a different question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting when you go through that process, right? Like, okay, you implement it, and it, the go live is this massive experience. Uh, you know, I actually implemented an ambulatory one in three days. That was an adventure. But you know, like even if you did the six month, you know, implementation for ambulatory, which is smaller, right? Or hospitals is years, right? Uh, it's amazing how much is not implemented, <laughs> like you know, but, and and not optimized because you're just like, okay, we'll do that later. We'll do that later. We'll do that later. We don't have to do this. <laughs> And it really is. It's amazing. And you, and yet you do so much during a go live. It's such a big deal. Yeah, it is not uh, something I've personally been through. I mean, I've only heard about the, and heard about stories from people like yourself and others who have gone through it. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's a massive undertaking, right? Like in terms of of you know getting that getting a whole hospital or even a whole clinic up and running on a singular system, uh, usually all at one time. It it's I can only imagine how hairy that really is. Yeah. And stages actually just makes it harder because then you're like limping along these paper processes along the way. And occasionally you do that anyways, right? Because you're just like, oh, the EHR can't support this. I think that's what the DOD is seeing with the Cerner rollout, right? Or the VA, they're just realizing, oh, Cerner doesn't have things that we need. And so we have to continue using the old systems. And then, so then, then you go to like, okay, do I integrate the old system or do I not? And eventually we wanted to get there. So it just becomes really challenging in that regard to do. But uh, the nice thing is that EHR adoption has come a long way. <laughs> like <laughs> if I look at the state of EHR adoption today, we're in a much better place than we were you know, 15 years ago. It turns out when the government offers money, people do something. So, you know, like on the hospital side, I, I, you know, I haven't seen the final numbers, but it's got to be in the five to 10%, I think, uh, of hospitals that don't have an EHR, which is pretty amazing to think about. And on the ambulatory side, it's a, it's a little less, but I think it's still 75% of, of, you know, have adopted EHR. So for the most part, the stimulus package worked to get EHR adoption to happen. Now, was, did it have other goals? That's a different discussion for another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had that debate before, but you're right. I mean, the incentive program was very successful in digitizing healthcare, at least turning it from what was uh, a hodgepodge of systems very small and scattered throughout the hospital, or and mostly paper, frankly, to at least now we're digital. So we can even begin the conversation of, okay, now how can we optimize this? And how can we improve upon now that we've got this digital foundation that we've laid uh, we spent the last 10 years pretty much doing. So uh, yeah, that's a good thing. Now you're right. I mean, you know, could we have done a better job and were there other things we could have done at the same time? The answer is yes, but we did achieve the main goal, which was we moved from a paper-based health care system to an electronic one. Uh, now we just, you know, we still can't exchange data and all that kind of stuff, but at least we're now talking about electronic, not a paper. Exactly. That's the conversation we've had before. At least now we can have those conversations <laughs> exactly. before it's like, okay, well, we don't have the data. Sorry. Good luck. <laughs> Go somewhere else. But yeah, I mean, to your point though, we adopted it. The interesting question I have around this is how many of these EHRs were adopted so quickly under meaningful use or under macro MIPS or whatever else that they didn't optimize them in the right way. And they literally don't realize that they're not optimized, but they've been using them for, I don't know, five years now. <laughs> and, and But no one went back to optimize them. How? What percentage of those? I mean, I, I haven't seen any data on this, but my guess is a lot of them are in that situation where 
they implemented it they did it in a rushed way and then they just got used to it but never went back to say hey was this the best way to implement this or should i have done something different and my guess is that the majority of organizations have areas of their ehr adoption where they haven't gone back and optimized yeah i'm i'm, I'm with you there I, I think there's a lot of organizations who implemented ehrs and then they you know let's be honest there's probably been some turnover yeah, so they probably fair. some people probably don't even realize that they didn't even implement it in a way that was optimal, right? It's yeah. as you just said, it's just now part of the furniture. This is just the way it always is. Yeah. <laughs> How many doctors are there like, why does this suck so bad? And you're like, oh, it actually could be better, but he never went back and made it better. <laughs> yeah. And 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 so you know, some of that has to do with I think, you know, once it once it's a, a problem has been solved, like implementing the EHR, you move on to the next problem, whether that's cybersecurity, whether it was interoperability, there's so many other problems on the table that, you know, EHR optimization may not have gotten to the top of the priority list. But, um, you know, I think to your point, John, if you actually sat down with a lot of organizations or put them all in a room together and kind of go, hey, like, how are you doing this? You probably find that, man, there's probably a lot of opportunity here for people to uh, go back and fix or um, or change the way maybe they're using or setting up an EHR to make it a little bit better for their front line or better for their patients or better for the IT staff. Yeah. And there's two indications that say this is a problem. The first is how many people go to an EHR user conference. It's massive, right? I, I actually think more healthcare organizations probably send more people to the EHR user conference than they do any other conference. And it makes sense. The EHR is the core, you know, enterprise system that impacts your organization. And so you should invest in that. And there's a lot that happens at user conferences. Sure, some try to upsell you and other things like that. But it's those lunches with your peers where you're like, oh, wait, you did what? You optimized that template this way or you turned on this feature that allowed that? And you're like, oh, okay, I should do that, right? And it gives you those ideas. So I think that's the first one is the attendance at EHR user conferences is super high. And that didn't even drop during COVID. I mean, even the virtual ones, they were still attending because it's such an important piece of functionality for that healthcare organization. The second one is the uh, class uh, Arch Collaborative. So, you know, class research has the Arch Collaborative where they were certainly looking at, at usability and satisfaction and EHR satisfaction and those things. But what came out of it, and if you, you know, I went to one of their events is you saw everyone was having those discussions. How do I optimize? What's the right way to approach to optimize? How do I do training? So that, you know, which if you look at training, Training is basically optimization <laughs> and doing a training the right way is making sure that that user is using the EHR in an optimized way. We don't often think of training as optimization, but it is because if you don't train them on the features and functions that they need, then they use it in whatever way they find out and it may not be the optimal way. So we saw that and I saw it firsthand when I attended the Arch Collaborative event, it was all these people coming together saying, how do we optimize our EHR? And partially because so many people say, I hate the EHR. It's so like that was the motivation behind you know, doing it. But the reality was, hey, we need to optimize this in a better way so that people are more satisfied. Yeah, I can, I can echo you know, what you just said there, John. I recently had the opportunity to attend the Greenway user conference. Mm -hmm. um, and it was back in person for the first time. And uh, it was amazing to see all these people there, right? Um, customers, I mean, providers uh, send all these people to go to that conference because exactly as you said, they were very curious to know what some of their peers were doing. They were on the hunt to find ways to shave off a few clicks here or there or find better ways to do this kind of reporting and that kind of reporting. The, the sessions were packed um, around, you know, how to get more out of Greenway, right? And and it makes a total sense because it is the backbone of all these organizations. It's their number one used application. It's their core. And so anything that you can do to improve that core, I think people are 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 doing it or are willing to invest in that. So um, I look at that as a as a as you said, a healthy sign that EHR has definitely. Uh, mature to the point where now we're talking optimization. I don't think anyone's really talking about rolling this out unless they're building a new building or something, but you know, it's all about, okay, how do I take what I have and make it better? 
Yeah, there's a few acquisitions where they're doing it as well, which is a, a painful experience for those involved. I, I wonder when we're going to reach that critical mass where it's like, sorry, we're too big. So we're just going to have two different EHR. I, I think some of them are getting to that point where it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Or maybe they just acquire where they have the same EHR so that there is a similar optimization. But yeah, I mean, to your point, uh, there is so much opportunity there. In fact, you hear that from the CIOs that I talk to. They're like, we don't want to add another piece of software. Like we have what we need. We need to optimize what we have until we do that. Adding another piece of software sounds like a bunch of work and actually makes it less optimized. And so, you know, when they look at it, they say, okay, well, what's the benefits here? I could go and buy another piece of software, which has its own implementation cycle and has its own adoption learning curve for the, everyone that's involved. Or I could go into the EHR, which we already have, and I can optimize it. I can, whether that's workflow optimization, whether that's template optimization, whether that's, you know, the, the alerts and warnings that are coming in, all of that can be done with the EHR optimization. Of course, training I already covered, right? All of those come in and what's the impact to the organization? I, I've seen this firsthand. I, I remember implementing some of these features or training them on a feature that they didn't remember. And they're, you know, there's this wow moment. They're like, wow, you just made my life easier. And it's just like this beautiful moment a little bit sad because you're like, I should have told you this six months ago, but you know, they weren't necessarily receptive to have it six months ago. And so, you know, we can all, we don't have to live in the shame of uh, you, this was there and you didn't have it. But you know, when you see it, like the user enlightenment, when they realize, Oh, you just made my life so much easier. And then they, what's cool is two weeks later, John, thank you so much for teaching me that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, it's just so nice, right? And and then and, and they still are, are are lauding it. And so it's a powerful thing when once you actually do it for the organization, it makes their experience using it so much better. Yeah, that's definitely one of the big benefits of, of EHR optimization, right? Is you're not implementing anything new, you're just sort of taking something existing and making it better. Sometimes that requires some new coding, sometimes that could require an add-on. But in general, it's not a huge lift like implementing it first was. And, you know, and not to say that that scares a lot of people, but I think maybe that was some trepidation around, oh my gosh, you know, when we first implemented this, it was such a change. We had such resistance. I don't want to mess with this now that it's in, yep. you know, but now I think again, the changeover has happened. Uh, enough time has passed where I don't think that's the case anymore. Now people are, 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 are more willing to go back and, and we look at things, right? Like, like you, you pointed out a couple of things. I would add, for example, cleaning up some of the screens, like eliminating some options which never get clicked on. Yep. Looking through the drop down of twenty options and going, you know, there's only three here that everyone uses at any given time. So why don't we just shorten this, get rid of all those seventeen others, and just put these three here? It's something as simple as that, right? Just shortening the the drop down lists and the pick lists and some of the some of these systems can have a huge benefit to the end users, right? Simplifying yep. their lives. So it doesn't. You know, we when I talk about EHR optimization, that's what I certainly think about is just you know tuning, right? It's not even a lot of coding involved in a lot of times. Well, the key though is having the right people there, and mm. uh, you know, Dr. C. T. Lin uh, at uh, UC Denver, he he taught me this, and I, you know, it's I think it's evolved, and I'd be interested to know where he's at now because I'm sure he's done this multiple times. But they would have these like teams that would come together because it's one thing for, you know, your trainer to go in and learn, Oh, that screen needs to be optimized and it could be optimized. It's different for them to learn that then take it to the Epic expert that's going to change the screen and then do it. But you have to remember that when they take it to the Epic expert, the Epic expert needs approval from the chief medical officer before they change that screen because it's changing it for everyone. And so you need the chief medical officer there to approve the change to the Epic expert that can then change it, which then gives it to the trainer who then gives it to the user that says, oh, okay, wow, you did that for me. And so, you know, it's actually a really simple process if everyone's in the room. But when they're not, it becomes 16 emails with questions of approval and it gets delayed and lost in their inbox and that doesn't happen. And so th that's why you need the whole team of informatics people, the medical people, the users, the trainers, et cetera, right? Like, so you need them all there to be able to, you know, make the change effective immediately or at least enact what's needed to make that change so that then it's not just, hey, I heard your problem and yeah, that is a problem and yeah, we could fix it, but we never actually get to it.
Hey, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Healthcare IT Today with John Lin and Colin Hung. Today, we're discussing EHR optimization. I know, it doesn't sound that exciting, but it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> it is for an end user that's yeah. suffering through a poorly optimized EHR. <laughs> exactly. All you have to do is talk to an end user who's, got, who's been on the receiving end of, of something that's gotten better in their EHR and just to see the relief and the, the, great, and the gratefulness on their face. Yep, absolutely. So, so John, um, let me ask you a question. Who are some of the players in the EHR optimization space? Is it all consulting companies? Are there some software companies? You know, who's who plays it? Yeah, I think there's a, a lot of people that are trying to to dig into this problem because it is a problem uh, that's so universal <laughs> to so many organizations. I mean, that's the beauty. EHR optimization is never done. <laughs> There's always more opportunity to, to improve it. And, and luckily, I don't think it's like some other areas where it's like actually the optimization could make things worse. I, I rarely see that in the EHR space, uh, you know, which, you know, like, the, they're, you know, let's do a rebrand that makes it worse. Like, like that can happen in marketing where you're like, wait, why did you change the logo? That's actually worse. Like in EHR optimization, that rarely happens. But there's a number of people, certainly the consulting companies, they're leading that space right? I mean, I know our friends at Divergent do a lot of work in this space, right? And even uh, Stoltenberg Consulting, uh, you know, they will work in this, although they do it, interestingly enough, they're doing more and more work on the support side and optimizing the support, which, uh, you know, anyone that's had to call in to get a password reset or to, to get a screen change or to understand how to use the EHR, et cetera, right? Second level support uh, for the EHR understands why you need to optimize the support. And it's really evolved because what happens at the go live, they have all that support there and they have at the elbow support and they have a call center that's answering it directly. Well, it's like, how do you scale that beyond it? And Stoltenberg has done a good job with that, right? And outsourcing that so that you get an expert who can actually solve the problem on the first call resolution. You know, that's a great optimization area is being able to solve a problem for them immediately. Because what happens is there's a lot of turnover. So now you get new users who haven't been trained appropriately, or maybe they come from a different system. And so they're like, why can't I do this? And then, you know, if they can call and get the support they need and a resolution to the problem that they're having, or maybe it's a med student who, you know, was recently added and doesn't know the ins and outs and needs some help. You know, they, you can optimize the support center, which is, a, a, you know, it's kind of a, you know, counterintuitive that you're like, wait, the call center is going to optimize my HR. But if, if you're able to solve it for people, for the end user, it can optimize your EHR use in a big way. So I think those are some interesting ones on the consulting side. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, it, it, you know, I, that's what I immediately think of when, when we talk about EHR optimization, right? Consulting companies, obviously, I think a lot of EHR organizations themselves, like whether it's Greenways or the Allscripts or the Cerner's and the Epics of the world, I mean, they have armies of people, right? That, that are going yeah, out Meditech and Meditech helping... rolled out their own consulting for right? it. <laughs> exactly. So Meditech as well. Yeah. They, 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 I think they are at the forefront of helping their own customers uh, get more out of their system. And when I say get more, I don't mean like implement more modules. I mean like, hey, let's go back and let's refine this report so it's easier for you to understand. Let's get this screen laid out a little bit better or change the way it was meant to be changed so that it works a little bit better for your people. So required fields, order sets, <laughs> there's so many options. Yeah. And I, so I think, I think that's happening. Um, at least when, when I think of optimization, that, that's who I think of in terms of that space. But you've mentioned a couple others, which I think are awesome, like Stoltenberg and, and, and uh, Divergent who are helpful as well. Um, you know, there's some technologies that I think of uh, alongside that, you know, one is a new company that I recently discovered and interviewed uh, recently, uh, the, the founder of Suba, Care Align, right? So they make a workspace where it makes it easier for clinicians to build care plans and document, and it sort of sits on top of an EHR. Now you think about that and go, well, that's kind of, shouldn't just the EHR be better? And, and the answer is, yeah, it should. Uh, and until that day gets there, you know, there's tools like this that can be applied, which can really help clinicians and, you know, and maybe one day, you know, this will be the UI, right, for, for, the, for the EHR. But it definitely for right now, anybody who's used that system apparently is just singing its praises and going, this is exactly how a clinician would, is thinking. This is exactly how I would document stuff. This makes it using my Epic or my Cerner system so much easier. So I think of tools like that in terms of optimization as well. 
Well, you bring up an interesting question. Should the EHR do that, right? Uh, uh, yeah, the EHR doesn't need to do everything. And so there's an argument that care plans shouldn't be in the EHR, you know, for a lot of people. Uh, there are other ones as well that I think are interesting. And, and this for me is solving the documentation burden, <laughs> uh, you know, that we've talked about before in other episodes that people could check out. But uh, the one that I find really interesting and heard really good things about is transformative med. And they, they have a solution that really focuses on the workflow and the data that a provider needs, that a doctor needs, that a nurse needs to be able to see the patient effectively, to document the patient effectively. And so, they, you know, they've done some amazing stuff. And on top of the HR, it's integrated with it. It's, it's done in a way that it's not a separate system. They've done it on top of the Cerner, et cetera, right? To be able to optimize the workflow for the physician to be able to do it. So I've heard really uh, great things about them and what they are able to do for a, a user. Uh, you know, users that see it are like, oh yeah, this is what I've always wanted. <laughs> like, this is how I think. And so, you know, there's stuff like that. And and then, you know, obviously we, we have the ambient clinical voice ones and, and other automated documentation solutions like Su Suki, uh, you know, has an automated documentation solution. Nuance is, the, is certainly the leader on the ambient clinical voice side that certainly is optimizing how you document in the HR. And in many cases, it's creating macros or other things to make sure that it's documented the right way and it's documented effectively and, and quickly, which is a great op optimization. If, if you don't have to do that many clicks, I mean, we know that we've talked about that before as well, like that people, doctors hate clicks, but you know, if you can do it in a more natural way that happens with ambient clinical voice, that is the ultimate EHR optimization from a documentation perspective. If it just happens automatically while it's listening, you know, that that's going to evolve. We'll see how quickly it evolves, right? I mean, it'll be interesting to see what Nuance does and Modal's doing some stuff there as well and some others. So, you know, that's another area of other companies. So, John, let me ask you um, this one. Should we be moving past <laughs> EHR optimizations or EHRs and onto something else? I mean, yeah, what's are you saying you're talking curve? about EHR, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's core to who I am. So it's, it's an interesting question, right? I mean, literally my first sites before healthcare IT today were EMR and HIPAA.com and EMR and EHR.com. So it's like so core to who I am. Maybe I'm have a biased perspective here, but I think that's actually the perspective of most provider organizations, most, you know, most hospitals and health systems, they realize the EHR is the enterprise solution. And so there's no way to get around it. So, you know, from a press perspective or tired of talking about it? Yeah, maybe a little bit, right? Uh, we talked about it so much during the meaningful use days and then macro and MIPS and all that and certified EHR. And what does that even mean? And which one should I choose? So yeah, I'm going to be a little tired of talking about it from that perspective, probably, right? But it's still so core to what every healthcare organization do, does that not talking about it is a mistake. Uh, I, well, yeah, I agree. Um, and, and not just because, you know, that's what we spend our days doing, right? Most of the time is talking about this stuff. But, um, I, you know, I, th I think, though, we are kind of moving beyond the EHR being all of it. Like, mm -hmm. I, still, I think it's core. I definitely think it, it needs some optimization. But I'm also seeing that I think we're now finally at a point where, okay, this is, we can stop thinking about it proactively, uh, even mm -hmm. though we might not should have. But what, what, I, what I mean by that is we're now t hearing a lot more conversations around how do I leverage the data out of my EHR? Like, how do I take this massive amount of data and analyze it and, and you know, apply AI to it or draw some conclusions from it? How can I merge it with other data sources and get even more rich information so I can care better for my patients? We're starting to see a lot more conversations about the devices and how you want to connect those to the EHR or, or have it send data into it and, and things like that. So I'm, I'm seeing that as a, you know, the EHR is just part of the furniture, right? And now we're talking about sort of the edges a lot more, like how do we leverage the stuff coming out of an EHR and how do we leverage more stuff, putting stuff into the EHR, um, as opposed to talking about the EHR itself. Um, yeah. I mean, it is interesting, the evolution of the conversation that the way we're moving past the EHR is what things do we want to add to the EHR? <laughs> Because like, I mean, literally in your description, everything yep. you're doing, like, oh, we want to talk about this new solution that will integrate with DHR. We want to do this new device that will integrate with DHR. So it's like, you know, that, uh, to me, that illustrates the core nature of EHR. 
And I'm not sure we get away from that, right? Like, I don't think that there's a new system that's going to come and replace the EHR in a way that's going to be like, oh, okay, now we can stop talking about the EHR. And no, I think all these solutions that are coming are going to leverage the either the data from the EHR and export it and then use it in a certain interesting way, or it's going to tie in directly through APIs or through Fire or through HL7 or whatever it might be to get the data in and out of the EHR. Yeah. And, and as you said, optimization is never going to end, right? You can always find something in the EHR to improve. There's always a workflow that can be redone and, and, and done better. You know, when you talk about adding other applications or other tools like ambient clinical voice and things like that, there will always be things. Your, your job will never be finished when it comes to the EHR. Well, and hopefully the EHR is still updating, right? I mean, when they roll out new features, you know, you're now not optimized because that new feature is available and you haven't done it. So, you know, I think there's that ongoing optimization, but it does become more of the furniture, like you said. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, thanks to all of you tuned into this episode of Healthcare IT Today. You can find out more details about our show by clicking out, by checking out, sorry, the programs page on healthcarenowradio.com. And please share your voice and engage with the community at healthcareittoday.com and on Twitter using the hashtag HITSM. I'm Colin Hung with my friend and health IT collaborator, John Lynn. Thanks for listening and have a great week.